Hello, this is James and welcome to the first video in my new series of how to play the details videos. You might have seen the introductory video a little while ago in which I explained that when WizKids released the WWE set, they took a big chunk of juicy stuff out of the rulebook and I kind of missed it. So I've decided to make several videos replacing that content. I'm going to go through each of the bits that they took out, give you lots of examples and add a bunch of stuff from my head like sort of relevant rulings and stuff. And in that way I hope it will be super useful for people who are learning to play the game and also for more experienced players. Today we're going to look at while active and when fielded effects. It's back to basics. So without further ado let's crack on. Okay so we're going to start with while active effects and here are three of them. While Lois Lane or Noxious Blightbringer or Pip the Troll is active means while one or more of this card's dice are in the field. Uh, it's probably worth emphasising it says when one or more of this card's dice are in the field. That means uh, if there's one die or two dice or three dice or 14 of that character's dice in the field, the effect will be exactly the same. Dice Dice Kitty was fond of saying that it's like a, like a light switch. It's either on or off. So with Lois Lane, for example, if you have one active Lois Lane die in your field, your Superman dice get plus one attack and plus one defense. And if you have two or three or four Lois Lane dice, it's the same. They still get plus one attack and plus one defense. With Noxious Blightbringer, um, he deals one damage to your opponent each time they spend a question mark energy, no matter how many Noxious Blightbringer dice you have in the field. It's never going to be two per question mark energy. And Pip the Troll only ever makes your opponent pay one more to use each global. It doesn't matter whether you have three Pip the Troll dice or one. It's just going to be one more expensive. That said, we should point out that your cards are considered to be completely different from your opponent's cards, even if they have the same name. So there are some rare situations where you might both have the same card on your team and both have uh, an active die of that card in the field. And if that effect affects both of you, then it will actually double up. It doesn't happen very often, but uh, here's a modern example. This is Blink. While she's active, when a player moves a die from their use pile to their prep area, deal one damage to that player. And that doesn't specify your opponent or you. So if you both had it and you both had her active, every time either of you moved a die from your use pile to your prep area, you would take two damage. And similarly, a really old example from AVX with Dr. Doom. If both you and your opponents had an active Reed Richards rival die in your field, since the effect affects both of you symmetrically, uh, non-villain characters would get minus two attack and minus two defense. But these are rare. By and large, while active effects do not stack and it doesn't matter how many dice you have. Just one more thing before we move on. Global abilities on opposing cards are also considered separate from your own, even if they have the same text. So it's kind of the same as we just talked about. To be clear, global abilities can be used regardless of whether there is an active die from that card in the field. However, it does mean that if both you and your opponent have, uh, for example, Clayface, uh, a Clayface card on your team, regardless of whether you have a die in the field, you can both use the global twice per turn instead of once. You can use it once on yours and once from your opponent's card. Okay, let's move on to when X. And what on earth do I mean by that? Well, maybe I mean when fielded, like Rocket Raccoon, who deals damage equal to his attack to a target opposing character die when he's fielded. Or maybe I mean when attacks, like, forgive the pronunciation, Shinsuke Nakamura. Uh, who knocks out an opposing sidekick when he attacks. Or maybe I mean when KO'd, like Hawkman, who lets you prep a die when he gets knocked out. Or there are other triggers, like when blocks, or when something takes damage. Um, all of these abilities uh, are, have something in common, which is quite different from while active abilities. Um, they all trigger per die. They stack, in other words. Let's have a look at the examples. Um, if you if you field, for example, two Rocket Raccoon dice on the same turn, each one of them will deal their damage um, to an opposing target character die. And, and it could be two separate opposing character dice, obviously. Um, if you have three Shinsuke Nakamura dice attacking, you can knock out three opposing sidekicks. 
And if you knock out four Hawkmen dice uh, in a turn, or indeed if your opponent knocks them out, you get to prep four dice from your back. Now, probably the most common of these abilities is when fielded, and it will serve as a template for these other when X effects. So let's have a closer look at what we actually mean by fielding. Uh, the term when fielded, according to the rulebook, refers to the moment you send a character die into the field zone. Seems obvious. Um, usually that would be from your reserve pool, and when you do so, you have to pay the fielding cost. So if you're fielding this Storm Boys on level one, you're going to pay one uh, into out of play, and you can move the Storm Boys die from your reserve pool into your field. And if it's on level three, obviously you're going to have to pay two. That's your that's the regular style of fielding. But some game effects may field a character die from a place other than the reserve pool. If we take a look at this uh, recent The Collector card, for instance, both uh, his ability, or part of his ability, and his global ability allow you to field stuff from the use pile. Uh, part of his main ability says when fielded, you may field a non-sidekick character die from your used pile um, at level one, and at the end of turn you KO it. And the global says, pay a mass once per turn, field a sidekick die from your used pile. In these cases, uh, the fielding cost should be assumed to be free, and the die should be fielded on level one, unless the effect says otherwise. Um, so, in this case, if I happen to have a Storm Boys die in my used pile, when I field the collector then I can move that Storm Boys die from used into the field, and I will do that for free uh, instead of paying the one that I would normally pay to field it on level one. Another card, which uh, is a bit older, but does much the same sort of thing as the Collector Global, or at least the Global does, uh, is Star Labs, uh, which has the Global pay a bolt and a shield, move a psychic die from your used pile to your prep area, and field another psychic die from your used pile. So that last bit is the same as the Collector. Um, let's have a look at another old card, Venom. This is from Civil War, Venom Spidery. While Venom is active, opposing sidekick character dice cost one more energy to field. And the question which might come into your head is, if you're fielding stuff uh, via one of these special effects, rather than naturally rolling sidekick dice, uh, putting them in your reserve pool, and then fielding them into the field from there, if you're using these sort of special globals and stuff, does Venom make it cost one more to field? And the answer is no, because there's a ruling on it, exactly this interaction, uh, which basically says effects like Venom would not increase the cost. And it's referring to, specifically, it's referring to free fielding effects like the, the couple that I've mentioned, not regular fielding. So, uh, if you had the Collector and you used his Global uh, and your opponent had an active active Venom Spidery die, you would not have to pay one more. You would just pay the Mask and you could feel the Psychic from your use bar, ignoring Venom's effect. And you could also ignore Sage's effect when you feel, well, when you feel the Collector, you will have to pay one more for that. But then, when you use his ability to uh, feel the non-Sidekick character die from your use pile at level 1, that is unaffected by Sage's ability. So you get to do that for free and ignore her effect. Okay, we've looked at regular fielding where you move a die from your reserve pool into the field and pay any necessary fielding costs, if there are any. Obviously, for example, psychics would be free to field. Um, and we've looked at sort of special examples of fielding from different places, like, for example, the used pile. Um, let's look at a couple of things which are not fielding because that's, that's pretty important. First up, it's important to realise that even though on your mat uh, you may have the attack zone as a completely separate area from the field zone, it's really, really important to realise that in fact the attack zone is just a subset of the field zone. All of that that I've highlighted there is the field zone, which means that moving dice from the field zone uh, into the attack zone, because you want to attack with them, is not any kind of fielding, and moving them back is not any kind of fielding, okay? That's all the same zone. Um, I will note, while we're on this this nice dice mat of mine, um, the prep area and KO is all one area. The KO is just a sort of convenient notation, but really it's just part of the prep area. It's not even, it's not even a sub-zone, it's just, really, it's just the prep area. Um, ironically, the one area which is not split up is probably the one that should be. Um, your used pile very definitely is 
uh, a separate place from out of play, uh, which some people put on the top, like me, some people put it on the bottom. Um, there's a video about that and you should check it out, but it is really important to realize attack zone, field zone, same thing. KO, prep area, same thing, but used pile, very definitely separate from out of play. There are a few other things which do not count as fielding. Um, specifically, if an effect says to move or place or return or swap a die into the field zone, this is also not fielding. It does basically need to say explicitly field in order to be fielding. Okay, so we've had a look at a couple of things which are not fielding. Let's have a look at some things which are fielding but are not <laughs> when fielded. Um, there are some cards like Gazer which have a keyword ability. A keyword ability uh, is in bold on the card um, and it is defined on the WizKids keywords page. Um, very often, but not always, there is in brackets and italics after the keyword a little explanation text, uh, but that's not always there. And if there is more detail on, on the website, that will always take priority. In any case, Gazer has the keyword Intimidate, uh, which as you can see, when he's fielded, uh, you remove a target opposing character die from the field zone until the end of turn. Now, clearly that takes place when he's fielded, because it says that. So when you move him uh, into the field zone, um, either from the, the reserve pool as usual, or using one of these free effects that I mentioned, um, his ability will trigger. However, keyword abilities are not considered to be when fielded ability. So if, if the keyword mentions when fielded, it's still not a when fielded ability. Uh, that matters very little, usually, unless your opponent has a card like one of these. Uh, Angela says, while Angela is active, ignore your opponent's when fielded abilities. And Wonder Woman goes one step further and says to ignore their when attacked abilities as well. These two cards would have no effect on Gaze's ability because uh, keyword abilities are not considered when fielded for the purposes of cards which care about such things. We're just going to have a quick look at a few more cards which have abilities which are um, fielding, but not when fielded. And one of these would be Jubilee. Uh, Jubilee says, while Jubilee is active, when you field a character die, she deals one damage to your opponent and one damage to target character die. So clearly something is happening when a die is fielded, um, but it does not count as a when fielded effect. Thor is another one which is similar. While Thor is active, when you field a character die, deal two damage to target character die or player. Both of these cards stem back to this original gangster Human Torch, which basically has the same ability as Jubilee. And there was actually a ruling on that which said, in short, the damage from Johnny Storm is from a while active effect, even though it is triggered by fielding other characters. And for that reason, those kind of abilities, while they are fielding, they are not when fielded, and they don't interact with Angela and Wonder Woman. Right, let's move on to timing and counting. Um, when fielded abilities trigger upon being fielded, according to the rule book, but resolve after the character die is in the field zone. This means that they are a valid target, for example, for their own effects, uh, which means that you can field Proxima Midnight. She says, when fielded, KO a character die you control. If you do, the next die you purchase this turn costs two less to a minimum of one. You can field her, and with her own ability, you can knock her out so that you can do the same thing next turn. Uh, sort of uh, self-KOing effect, if you like. Also, they are available for effects that count the number of dice in the field zone. So, for example, Norman Osborn, when fielded, deals one damage to your opponent for each villain character die in the field zone, both yours and your opponent's. Um, he would add to that total, okay? So if there are 10 villains before he's fielded and you field him, then that would be 11 damage. And Bobby Heenan has Underdog, uh, which is another keyword effect. Uh, the explanation text text says you may use this effect when your opponent has more superstar dice in their field zone than you do. Um, when you field him and you make that count about who has more dice, he will count himself because he's already in the field when he resolves. Uh, so if your if your opponent has, let's say, one die and you have zero dice and then you field Bobby Heenan, you don't get to do the underdog effect because uh, he will be in the field. So you will now also have one die. And for underdog to trigger, you must have strictly fewer dice. Just while we're on the subject of counting, it's probably a good time to mention 
that cards like Norman Osborn and also the, the basic action Betrayal, which uh, mention character dice, they're counting character dice, they will literally count the dice. Whereas cards like Boom Boom and Starfire, which mentioned active characters, will be counting unique characters, not dice. Uh, to be clear, this is not limited to when fielded effects. Obviously, I just thought it was a good time to mention it. So if we just have a little example, uh, Betrayal will count... Uh, if, if your opponent has these dice in their field zone, Betrayal will count all of those dice, and so it will do six damage to your opponent. Um, whereas Boom Boom, when she's fielded, she will count herself. So we've got Boom Boom, Shriek, Jean Grey, and we will count only one of the psychics. Psychics certainly are characters, but Boom Boom only counts one of them because they have to be unique characters, so she will do four damage. It's also well worth noting that in both of these cases, the card makes it quite clear whose dice are being talked about. In the case of Betrayal, it's your opponent's, and Boom Boom is the person who fills Boom Boom. Um, but that's not always the case. Some cards don't make it clear. And if it doesn't specify otherwise on the card, abilities which refer to a type of die refer to both players' dice, which can be a bit surprising. So Aquaman actually gives a discount to both players' uh, Justice League characters. Um, Avalanche triggers when either player feels a villain. Scarecrow causes both players' sidekick dice when they're KO'd to go to the use pile instead of the prep area. And Lex Luthor increases costs for both players. But if instead of talking about uh, types of dice, if a card ability names a specific character, it only applies to characters on that player's team. So for Robin, Hawk, Silgar and Wong, you would need to have your own Batman or Dove or Xanathar or Doctor Strange. And your opponent having any of those dice doesn't count for the purposes of these abilities. Okay, one last thing before we go, and that is discounts. The vast majority of card abilities require you to either have the die already in the field or for it to be in the process of being fielded. And in fact, that is the default assumption for practically all abilities. One exception to this uh, is discounts. Character dice that reduce their own purchase or fielding cost do not need an active die in the field to receive that discount. Uh, so, for example... Uh, Batman does not need to be one of the Bat characters that you have in the field to give you a discount on buying Batman dice. You could have uh, an Alfred and an Oracle and your Batman would cost three even though it's the first one that you've bought. And do note that you can actually combine discounts unless the card says otherwise. Uh, there was a ruling on this concerning Big Entrance and Half Dragon. Um, basically it says you may stack discounts unless they say otherwise but you must still pay one energy of each type required to purchase dice so for example if you fielded the Proxima Midnight we saw earlier and you had one Alfred in the field so one back character and you rolled a big entrance die you could get a total of four discounts um, two from Proxima Midnight one from big entrance and one from Alfred and therefore you could buy your Batman dice for one mask. But it would have to be a mask, obviously. Um, and there is a minimum of one. So if you had an Alfred and an Oracle in the field, uh, in addition to the big entrance and the Proxima Midnight, you can't get the Batman for free. And if you've actually got a crossover die, which requires two types of energy to buy it, that's as low as the price goes. So having Proxima Midnight would reduce the cost by two which is fantastic but having an additional big entrance would not reduce the cost any further because you still have to have a mask and a shield for big e however if you did have a big entrance at least you could put a die in your bag okay i think that is quite enough for now i hope that has been useful for you um i think we've covered quite a lot of ground next time you can look forward to uh, a video on re-rolling and spinning and various other things. I'll try to pack it full of as much information as I can. Um, I, hope, I hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you very much for listening. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and share and stuff like that. Thank you very much. Take care and see you soon.